Our final session for the morning before lunch is uh, a panel. And uh, Matt Oguz, Matt, where are you? Come on up. Matt, by the way, is well known for many things, but two of the things he's well known for is he was clever enough to invest early on in Ripple and in Circle, right? Yes. He's buying lunch, by the way. I'll buy lunch. Yeah. So uh, Matt's going to introduce his panel. Uh, you've got a microphone there, and this is for, if you, if you have any slides, that's for the slides. Big round of applause for Matt and the panel. Hi, everyone. We have a wonderful panel here. Before lunch, we're going to talk about AI and blockchain and how the two should or should it come together. Um, on our wonderful panel this morning, we have Eric Lee um, from Hub. Eric was also uh, part of the founding team at LinkedIn. We have Aman Johar. Aman's with Proteum. He's an expert in blockchain. We have Larry with Amino Capital, an investor in technology companies. Last but not least, we have Smut from IBM, a renowned expert in uh, computer science, blockchain, and AI. So uh, let's get started. Let me sit over, it's much better. So I want to start out with a brief description or a brief discussion if you would like to introduce yourselves quickly, um, uh, followed by what is artificial intelligence? I mean, we, we talk about this. There are different thoughts and notions, and some of the descriptions take a very long time. By the time you get to the end of the description, you don't know what they talked about. Uh, but what is artificial intelligence, and why is it important to us? Um, after that, we'll talk about the impact of blockchain with that, but let's 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 have you guys describe artificial intelligence first. Okay, um, my name is Sumit Gupta. I lead um, AI and machine learning, and HPC actually, in IBM Cognitive Systems, and uh, we, we basically build a product based on open source software like TensorFlow, uh, designed for data scientists to make them more productive. So I have a very simple definition of AI, machine learning, deep learning. AI is a catch-all term, in my opinion, that catches a number of technologies which essentially are our attempt to make computers mimic humans. So that's the highest level of what I think AI is. Machine learning is a set of methods that instead of teaching a program, uh, a computer by programming it um, uh, in, a, in a sort of procedural way, which is if this, then do this, you instead teach a program or a computer by experience, right? So uh, just like humans learn, we learn with experience. Machine learning tries to mimic that experiential learning. And then deep learning is a method within machine learning that uses deep neural networks. And it's very effective as a learning method when you have lots of da uh, labeled data. Uh, my name is Larry Lee, uh, Lee and uh, Amino Capital Managing Partner. Uh, so we invested in uh, early stage companies, particularly data-driven companies. And those companies that can generate a lot of data get us attention. Uh, with those data together, uh, with the feedback from users, those live data become the important ingredients of AI. So AI, we believe it is really the amount of data you have and using them to summarize or to gain certain insight into human behavior. This is AI. And for example, if you say you, like, you do like on Facebook, if you do 35 times, you're like pretty much telling Facebook who you are. If you do like more than 100 times, actually Facebook would know you better than yourself. If you do it more than 100 times, the Facebook would know you better than your mother. So this is AI. Uh, this is a new environment and a new period. Uh, so it's very dangerous for AI to be misused. That's why I believe where the blockchain comes in that can help us make things a little better. 
So Aman and then Eric, continuing on this definition, if I use a calculator, for instance, it calculates numbers much faster than I could ever do. Is that AI? Well, the way I would uh, uh, build on that is to say that, well, AI is something that uh, brings in consciousness to the stream of zeros and ones flowing in a digital network, right? Everything is data. Every, the more and more all these companies that are evolving today, and especially when we move into the blockchain world, everything is going to be a digital native company. Now, in, in that kind of a scenario, data by itself is not actionable. You have to make it actionable through some, some sort of a, a consciousness that you impart to it. Now, the way to do it is there's plenty of techniques, uh, and I'm sure the guys from IBM and uh, other companies can attest more to the technology on how you do that, but, but it's really making the data actionable in a way where it solves some problems that are either invisible to the human mind or it pro pops up new and interesting applications that can make life simpler. Uh, so uh, just a brief introduction of, about myself. Uh, I'm Eric Lee. Uh, I was one of the uh, co-founders of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, currently, I'm working on a, a blockchain project called uh, Hub. And uh, my, my experience with uh, AI w w was that I uh, uh, actually studied it in, in school. Uh, so when I was a student, uh, I was very interested in uh, AI. And uh, uh, unfortunately, it was many years ago. Uh, I wish it were more, more recently. but. Um, uh, so I, I have a just an innate uh, interest in, in AI, and uh, so what I would say uh, is that um, AI, as it is understood today, and the startup opportunities that exist, uh, really is about analyzing data and drawing insights uh, from that data, and more than that, uh, drawing uh, actionable insights uh, from that data. And so whenever you have lots of data and you are trying to uh, find uh, patterns with the intention to uh, you know, predict uh, new data uh, and take action on that. That's where a lot of AI comes in. Um, and I, I, I feel that the debate around AI has sort of gotten off track, uh, particularly with people like uh, Elon Musk and, and uh, others, uh, in uh, really comparing AI as kind of this uh, panacea for uh, machines replacing humans or human-like uh, behaviors, because AI in itself is a technology uh, that uh, really is uh, a way to analyze data, uh, and it may in some cases exhibit human-like behaviors, but uh, is not to be confused with uh, creating humanoids uh, that act like humans. So I guess conti continuing down on, on that subject of fearing AI or um being fearful of the robots, which, which, which I am. Um, in software and in technology, we're looking for um, accountability and transparency and recourse. And blockchain gives us all three. Um, so if it's an AI system, if it's a self-driving car, we might need to know, or we might want to take a look at the source code to see if it's working out great. If you keep it in a black box structure, then you don't have any access to the source code, which is interestingly the case for a lot of AI softwares or AI companies that are out there. So is, is the blockchain essentially, um, is, it a, is it an essential requirement perhaps for, an, for such a life um, important uh, software technology that runs? Should the AI um, software run across blockchain so that way everybody can, can see it? What, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, I'll, I'll answer briefly and give the other panelists a, an opportunity as well. Um, I, so I think that uh, you know, this panel is about blockchain and AI. And uh, uh, I think one of the big opportunities that blockchain brings to AI is this kind of uh, transparency uh, around uh, the data and also around the uh, algorithms that are used to uh, process that data. Uh, I think one of the things that people worry a lot about in terms of AI is uh, the trust that they place in some kind of uh, you know, computer program uh, that makes decisions. And uh, trust comes from uh, transparency. And so when you have the, uh, the, the source 
of the data, and you understand what the source data is, and when you maybe also have uh, access to the algorithms that run on that, uh, then you begin to have this trust between you know people and the machines. So I believe that blockchain really is going to be a boon to AI. So I think if you had asked me that question about a year and a half ago, I would have probably said that philosophically AI and blockchain are fundamentally different. AI is a black box, like very tightly controlled by people who develop the algorithms, whereas blockchain is transparent, it's open, right? And where do you find the intersection of both was very hard to see. But I think the last year or so, technology has evolved, as it always does. And now it's becoming more and more clear that there are ways where blockchain technology can actually help AI. And, and, and the, the answers lie in what you rightly said, is that how do we validate these data? How do we validate these data models? Is there a marketplace that can be created where people who can contribute good data people who can contribute good data models, can they be compensated in a way <clears throat> where they, they are incentivized to keep creating those uh, models and data? So, so it, in a way, what we are seeing now is a big shift in, in the mindset where uh, companies are being born natively on the blockchain that are trying to solve these problems of data uh, provenance. And, as, as uh, Tim Draper mentioned this morning as well, you see it in healthcare. If you have access to your own data, it's already distributed right throughout the world. There are seven billion people, seven billion pieces of unique data sets, right? So now it is a matter of how do you access that data in a way where people are incentivized to contribute it and create new marketplaces. And I think part of that is going to be through new tokenized business models. Well, AI as well as blockchain are double-edged swords, like AI, right? So it's like all the weapons or all the kind of technology human being developed before, right? It only makes things a lot faster. AI is summarized all the information. Right now, the concern is only those information are used and controlled by a small amount of people and benefit by the, uh, by the small amount of people. Uh, so AI cannot, can really just make things hundred times, thousand times faster, but it doesn't make the society better. So we are concerned about these few people who are controlling those data. So it's about, it's about the, the, the individual responsibilities. For example, the real concern about AI is this, then what? As Matt mentioned, I think one is good point is if you open up the decision process using blockchain, so everybody know the source code, know whether it's fair or not, that become very critical. For example, if I'm driving a car, a self-driving car, hit a roadblock, there's no better choice. One side is 10 new immigrants from Mexico. The other side is a top scientist from US. Literally, in the future, this will be decided by machine. You want to hit that 10 person, a new immigrants, or hit that top scientist? This is, could be designed by a company. But if this, thing, this logic is put in the blockchain, open up, then the society can decide. So this probably, I feel a lot better, not just decide by Elon Musk or by somebody else. So this is where the blockchain come in. Blockchain open up the rules, let everybody to exam. At the same time, it has similar problems. Blockchain increase the, your own responsibility, right? You can own your own data, you can control your data, but all your data will be leaked once. Then it's on the internet. So you are really has a lot more responsibility. So some people say, oh, blockchain will make the society a lot better. It provides a tool for us to make the society better. But blockchain itself cannot. Still, it is the individual responsibility to protect your own data because all the information on public chain is there. It will be crowded, it will be anal analyzed by the top scientists, top team. So eventually, you're really not gaining much privacy. All your actions on blockchain, on public chain are recorded. So it is kind of concern. That's why I believe both AI and blockchain are the tools make the human society a lot more efficient, but it doesn't make the society better. For the society to be better, it still depends on every one of you and us. We have to control the rules. We have to contribute to all the, uh, all the rules that will be defined. 
So if the car has to choose between 10 people and a scientist, the car should kill me and not kill any of them. That's the decision I'd like the car to make. Um, <clears throat> so I'll take a contrary perspective, and that'll make the panel fun. Um, I actually kind of disagree with you guys. Um, so first of all, we already depend on AI today. If you used Google Maps to make a decision on how to come here today, you used AI. If you used flight bookings, if you do even LinkedIn, right, today is being run by all kinds of complex machine learning, deep learning algorithms, how you like things on Facebook. All the consumer services that we enjoy today, in fact, are AI or machine learning, deep learning based today. Uh, and you don't need the blockchain to make, enable them. And in fact, if I knew how they made the decision, I still couldn't do anything. Because the fact of the matter is the models that make these decisions are too complex for even a trained data scientist to be able to inspect and figure out why did it make the decision. So AI is not a black box. AI is just too complex, right? It's, it's like almost how we make decisions. When we say, yeah, my gut told me to do this, that's actually your experience. In my belief, when you say gut, it means my experience told me to go do that. That was a really complex, real intelligence running in your head uh, and making a decision. So I think you know the so-called open sourcing of machine learning models or data models, you can do it. It's not going to make a difference because no one's going to understand what's there anyway. Um, and I think on your example of medical images, um, so what if 7 billion medical images are available if each one of us contributes? It means nothing. You need a trained expert to label each image and mark where, let's say, the cancer is. So data itself is useless. You need labeled, augmented data that has been labeled by an expert, a human expert, to really be able to make that data useful for an AI or machine learning model. So um, you know, I believe that what's really going to happen is the companies that own data will actually, be, the smart ones will become AI companies because they'll use their data to build new AI services to offer it. I think there will be very few companies that'll just sell their data away because that would be just giving up too much value. Can I, can I Absolutely. Share? Yes. So, so this is very interesting, right? Uh, I, think, I think the fundamental difference that we are coming from here is from a big enterprise perspective versus a startup perspective. Big enterprises, you take it, name it, Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, everybody has a moat around data. Everybody wants to control the data. Everybody wants to have as much data as possible. I mean, there's a reason Google pays uh, billions of dollars to acquire satellite imaging companies, but then they give out TensorFlow for free, right? But the algorithms don't mean anything. The data means a lot. Now, even if you have these centralized companies, right, there is going to be, uh, they, they cannot go out and aggregate every piece of information and every piece of data that is out there in the world. That is still decentralized. Your data is with you, my data is with me. Why should I trust a Google or a Facebook to, have to, to, to be the uh, custodian of my data when I can custody my data myself and give permissions to anybody else out there who incentivizes me to give them access to my data. That is a fundamental shift in the mindset of how these digital businesses are going to operate in the future. Any other thoughts on that? Two different points of view. Someone who's from a centralized uh, platform start, that now, owns the data exactly. and, 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 and uses it. Uh, to their benefit, um, I think. I think one of the um, opportunities around blockchain is is precisely around this uh, data ownership and data privacy uh, topic. Uh, and uh, as we've all, you know, been living uh, through this experience of uh, these platforms uh, becoming hacked and our our data. You know, getting lost. I mean, just just last week, for example, uh, Facebook uh, announced that uh, you know 50 million uh, accounts 
uh, had been hacked into, and, and uh, they've taken steps to uh, address that. But uh, how, how uh, many more times is, is that going to happen? How many more other platforms is that uh, going to affect uh, that are unannounced? Uh, and and uh, you, you've seen more and more examples now of uh, the, the data being uh, used in, in, in many ways uh, w with the best intentions uh, by these centralized platforms, but uh, they, they are also uh, in many ways driven by a profit motive to, to use a valuable asset such as data uh, to uh, create more uh, profit uh, for themselves. Uh, and AI is part of that whole uh, bag of tricks that is used to squeeze more value out of uh, uh, data. And so the, the opportunity with blockchain, uh, I believe, is to uh, uh, reset the stage and to uh, put potentially the ownership and the control of that data back into the user's hands uh, and, and uh, to be used uh, in a way that is uh, economically uh, beneficial to those users uh, as opposed to uh, being used in ways that uh, may not be according to their own uh, wishes. And so, uh, you know, to, to, to try to strike a, a counterpoint here, I think the uh, opportunity with blockchain is to actually make AI uh, much more useful or, or much more uh, trustworthy so that as uh, AI permeates more and more uh, into our lives with various kinds of uh, applications. Uh, there can be a, a transparency there uh, that uh, you know leads to more uh, usage of, of AI, and, and that's really the promise of the you know decentralized blockchain uh, that can really help promote uh, technology such as AI. So one of the things, if not the core thing that you know, I do at my firm, Venture Science, is we try to make investment decisions as away from biases as possible. So we're all prone to biases, cognitive biases, um, and the, these biases play into every single decision that we make. And that, that includes myself and everybody else in this room, too. And so the farther away from biases and the more we can see that there are biases that might impact our decision making in a negative way, uh, the better off we are to try to avoid those. And so, um, you know, in, in forming, I guess, the consciousness or the intuition of a uh, system of artificial intelligence, uh, you know, how would blockchain and AI kind of combine together would help that uh, system avoid the biases because um, you know the, the car example, the car crash example is a perfect example of AI forming a certain bias. Oh, I will go this way. Here's why, ABC. Well, that becomes a bias. Um, I will go this way. There's a important um, case that's going on in the United States right now. There's an AI system that's used by some courts to decide because the caseload is so much, the judges are using this system to make conviction decisions, and people are not allowed to see the code that's inside this software that impacts people's lives in, in perhaps the harshest way. And other people are claiming that that system is very prone to biases towards certain ethnic backgrounds. So um, would you elaborate or talk about in your experience how these systems could help avoid these biases, make us better decisions in the broader term? I think to follow on that, because the blockchain gives you the opportunity to control your own data. Right now, most of the social media data you contribute involuntarily because you have to do certain things, right? Yeah. Same thing with uh, the, the, the commerce data on Amazon. You bought those things and then those things become part of your record. Uh, you don't have control over how Amazon will do advertising or eventually somebody will use the data for other purpose. You have no control. In the future with the blockchain, there is an opportunity that you can control what kind of data you want to expose, what kind of data you want to be used commercially to do advertising and then you have an opportunity to make money out of that. So this is the new opportunity with the blockchain. And back to the more urgent thing for us as a VC, where when we look at the people, work with people, look at the new companies, 
we like the people who are thinking not linearly. So for people using blockchain, combine the blockchain technology with other technology, then you can make a difference. Blockchain alone will not. That's why we're looking at the, the solutions, not really a technology themselves. So I think I'll take a step back here, right? And uh, <clears throat> one of the bigger reasons, uh, and I don't think we are anywhere closer to a world where we have to make the life-altering decisions of cars running over people. That's, that's way out in the future. I think we have to solve these uh, smaller problems first before we get there, right? So blockchain, where, where it really comes in is it allows, it gives us a, at least a framework to start solving the smaller problems first. Right, so for example, what is the data that you're using to train your models? Where is that source from? What is the authenticity of that data? Did somebody alter that data? Does that alteration mean that, you're, that, that the next generation of models that are being trained on that data will yield something different in some, some other different scenarios, right? So you've got to establish the provenance of that data first. Once the provenance of data is established, then you have to establish the provenance of the models. And this is exactly where I'm, I'm kind of coming in by saying this is a really big mindset shift in how you look at data, how you look at these models that are training these data. Now, not all data can come from the bigger companies themselves. And, and we've, we are now seeing a number of, num there, there's, if you go out and look at uh, w the developments in, these, in this uh, space, there's a number of companies out there that are it, collecting that data in a decentralized way and putting it under decentralized protocols for uh, analysis as well. So I think, I think those are the things that will play out more and more. And based on the results that we see from those experiments, and these are all experiments by the way right now, there's nothing concrete out there that is deployable in the market. So the more we learn from those experiments, that will pave the pathway for future course of action where we can build the consciousness of, well, should I hit one scientist or should I run over 10 other people? So Sumit, quick question for you at IBM. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Um, IBM has both a phenomenal blockchain team and effort and Watson, of course, on the AI side of things. Um, what's going to happen if Watson wakes up one morning and says, I need to be running on the blockchain? Um, and, and there's many products, AI products. I run a different product. I'm not in Watson. I run a product called Power AI. So there's many AI efforts at IBM. Um, uh, so, you know, I think you put it the best way. Uh, AI, blockchain, these are all tools. They're just tools in our toolkit. And when it makes sense to use the toolkit for certain things, we will do it, or other companies or our clients will do it. Um, you know, we focus more on blockchain today for uh, securing transactions, securing supply chain. Um, we have other methods, I would say traditional methods for data governance and model governance and data lineage, which don't involve blockchain today. Now, I'm not saying blockchain is not the right answer. We could go use it. Like I said, it's a tool in the toolkit. Um, I do want to go back to the question you originally asked. I don't know if any of my colleagues addressed it, but you asked about bias. Um, bias is an extremely important thing in AI, and in fact, very dear to IBM uh, as a company. We, in fact, announced a AI bias toolkit, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And um, bias, in, in many ways, one can claim that AI is biased by the people who trained the AI model, right? Because like I said, AI itself is just an algorithm or a model. You have to give it data for it to become smart. So think of it, in the beginning it's a brain, but it doesn't know anything and you're teaching the brain and it learns by the data you give it. So if you give it a lot of biased data, it'll learn about biased information. So, um, you know, if we go to an example, maybe a more uh, real example, which is nearby, if, if a bank is trying to do uh, credit card applications and try to use a machine learning model to decide who gets credit and who doesn't, then all they do is they look back at the last two, three, four years of data on what they've done on loan uh, or credit uh, approvals and, and, and rejections and how those credit cards have done. 
But that decision itself in the last three or four years may have been a biased decision. So you may be inherently training your models with your own biases over the last few years. So it's very important to introduce secondary checks into machine learning models which check for biases. And, and that's a very important piece of work that we are doing, that many others are doing, but IBM definitely is focused on through our research uh, teams. Okay, I think we are talking about big company and small company. Uh, here's my thinking. Every company has a gene. It's very difficult to change, right? It's very difficult for Yahoo to do search. It is very difficult for Google to do social. Same thing with AI here and with blockchain. Blockchain literally gave back the controls to individual. It's very difficult to imagine Mark Zuckerberg or Tim Cook or Larry Page will give out the control of their company. Literally, the real meaningful token are security tokens. Literally, you're giving out the shares of the company. They don't have the approval of the board or the shareholders, and they, they have their own interest there. It's literally like Coda doesn't want to do digital camera. There's no way for Facebook, for Google, for those big companies. Yeah, but large funds, uh, hedge funds, there's a lot of hedge funds running computer software today, make investment decisions. So it's not far-fetched to say that one day an AI-driven organization will become an activist shareholder in Google and file a suit and go through all what, what a Carl Icahn might do, it's a whole different subject matter discussion, but computer could become a shareholder and continue down that way, accumulate shares and influence the running and the governance of the company. Now, I guess in, in case of Google, they have some certain blocks in place, voting stock and non-voting and so forth, but that's what activist investors do. Yeah, so eventually there will be a company getting very big and utilizing, or organization, I don't mean, may not be a company, maybe a community or organization, nonprofit. They have a lot of influence. They have lots of tokens. They, they own those uh, kind of a blockchain uh, open source code. So those companies or those organizations will have a far more, becoming far more influential than Facebook, than Google. But I, hard for me to believe Facebook, Google, including IBM, could be very influential in the future. That's what I think the new dimension adding, with a new dimension of blockchain, that coming with the new companies. So I think when we talk about activist investors and bigger companies, Facebook, IBM, Google, all of those, right? We are bringing in concepts of yesterday into the economy of tomorrow, right? Uh, who is to say that activist investors will still stick around in the, the digital world? Look at Ethereum. Who owns Ethereum? Nobody. It's a stateless organization, right? So but the, the developers... Or, but, but as a whole, it becomes activist. Yes, as a the whole, it becomes activist. As, yes. Excuse me, as a whole, could become an activist mm -hmm. investor mm -hmm. and do something. Exactly, and that's where decentralization matters, right? If you look at... Bitcoin mining today, right? Uh, probably 70% of it is in China. Probably 99%, right? half of them in this room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but if, if, if governments try to take control over that, who is to say that there won't be a fork out and people, there will be Bitcoin nodes springing out all across the world? That's going to happen. So the activism may not come from single entities. It may come from a really big, large, decentralized community itself. So those are concepts of a digital native world. And I don't think we should encumber them by our thinking of what worked yesterday. And, and we should really try to look at what are the new business models that are being enabled by just being in this new and exciting uh, environment. Eric was gonna say something. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, you know, uh, the panelists here have brought up a, a very important um, uh, you know, question. I think there, there's a lot of promise around blockchain and AI, but um, I think I think one of the problems, uh, if we are to realize the potential of AI, the promise of AI, is is, is really around uh, uh, where the data resides today. 
and uh, this whole debate around uh, you know centralized versus uh, decentralized. So uh, I, I talked to a lot of uh, investors uh, in my role. Uh, I talked to a lot of entrepreneurs also. And uh, you know, one of the hardest things about AI companies is that uh, all these AI companies have great uh, ideas and, and great code, but they, they don't have the data. Uh, the data that they really need uh, is secured in uh, these large companies that have the, the data. And so as a result, you have uh, essentially, uh, you know, kind of a version of the innovators' the dilemma. The, 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 the entities that are most uh, ready to innovate, uh, in fact, are the ones that uh, are, are, are stuck uh, without uh, this, this valuable, you know, data that they can really do some, you know, really great things with. And the same thing, uh, in fact, is actually the case right now with uh, blockchain. And so we talk a lot about, uh, you know, data ownership and, uh, you know, uh, bringing the control of the data, you know, back from the centralized, uh, you know, silos to, uh, to users. Uh, but in fact, uh, the entities that have most of the valuable data, at least today, are the centralized ones. And uh, they're, 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 they're not going to uh, put their data on the blockchain. You'll have to take it out of their cold, dead hands uh, to, to, to... They're thinking linearly. It's very difficult for them to, to be successful. Right now, quite a few people doing auto-driving. Their way of thinking is auto-driving supposed to from my door to your home's door. This kind of linear thinking, you think about auto-driving is... No, probably it's a different tier. Maybe the highway is auto-driving. Locally, there may be kind of some kind of Ubers sharing. You have to think non-linearly to be successful. That's why we haven't invested in any algorithm that so-called doing auto-driving, because this linear thinking is not going to work. Same thing with the next, next big thing or next big company. If we think linearly, say, hmm, now Facebook is doing this, I make it better. Just better is not enough. You have to think linearly. You have to think non-linearly. You have to add a new dimension to it. I think blockchain gave us a chance to add a dimension to it, not thinking linearly. So that's why we don't invest in any company that say, I have a new algorithm. I can make uh, LinkedIn better. No, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to beat LinkedIn. Same thing with social media. I can do social media better because I focus on the age between 45 and 50. We have never seen a company successful like that because you cannot beat Facebook on social media, on social networking, unless you add a dimension to it, a new dimension to it. Any additional thoughts? Well, we we're have, almost, a, we have almost one minute left, yes, so let me use ahead. it up, right? So, um, yep. um, you know, I, I, I think um, what I heard is Eric said the big companies have the data, the small companies don't. But Aman said the small companies are going to become the data brokers. So I don't know how that happens because the big companies, like you said, won't let go of the data because it, I believe it's the most important resource they have. And the smart ones will use it to build better AI models. So I don't know. You guys are talking about disruption. This is a disruption conference. I'm not sure how the disruption will happen. Well, thank you very much. Round of applause for all of our panelists here. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And, and if you guys will stay on stage, you can stand up and maybe come to this side, and you're going to join some colleagues. Can, there's some awards now before we go to lunch. So here's who should be coming up. Deep Brain Chain, you should come up. B Token, you should come up. Splend, Proteum, already here. Vision X, you should come up. Uh, we, Matt, you stay. Uh, in fact, everyone who was just on the panel stay for various reasons. And Angie uh, is going to present some awards. She's going to go in the middle, go in the middle there, and then she'll call you one by one, and she has some awards. You can come on, carry the awards as well. Yeah, you go with Angie. And a round of applause for Angie, please. She organized this wonderful event. By the way, I just want to acknowledge as an Englishman that it's very Chinese to give people awards. I'm not sure these guys have actually achieved enough yet to get these awards, but still, I think it's fantastic that they're going to take something home and feel proud. So it's good. Do you want to call the names? Oh, so first, first Deep Brain Chain. Deep Brain Chain, come on up. Congratulations. 
deep B token. Loved your talk this morning. Splend. Going deep in the stack. Proteum. I love the revolutionary comments against the IBM. Vision X. And we, we left the best to last, of course. Uh, first, Matt, founding partner at Venture Science, and a great investor. Eric, oh, sorry, I'm going too fast for you. Summit. This is an award for, making, for working for a big company. He, de he deserves an award for working at IBM. And uh, Larry, this is an award for being revolutionary as well. Okay. And now lunch. We are going to start on time after lunch. So that is one. Oh, group picture. Everybody come in the middle, group picture. I'll keep out of it. Back in the middle, group picture. You need a wide angle lens to get this picture. I like the Superman music. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you everybody, go and have a good lunch.